say so shoulder of the camps adding a new user with admin role access. Uh, firstly, your IT department or whoever controls your Active Directory will need to have added your user's uh, window account into the system and also into the say 200 users Active Directory group. Uh, once it's been completed, then we need to log in as an existing user of the system who is in the say 200 administrators group and already has access to the system administrator option. For today's purposes, I'm logged into the system as the administrator user who has already been added into the say 200 administrators group. I'm performing this user creation on the latest version 10.00.0020 of the say 200 account package, uh, which is say 200 extra 2015 service pack 2. For any version earlier than version 8, then the user creation is not covered in this session. So as long as it's version 8, 9 or 10, which is versions 2013 or Sage, Sage 200 versions 2015, then this is included. Once we're logged into Windows as a user with the Sage 200 administrator access, we then need to click or locate the system administrator option. For me, this is located in my start menu. So I'll just click start and I've got system administration there. Okay. Uh, if, if this is not on your Windows desktop, then please use the standard window set to locate the say 200 administrator option. Uh, by, by default, this will be installed to C Program Files x86, Sage, Sage 200, and called Sage 200 Administration.msx, MSC rather. Um, that's because it's a 64 bit operating system, uh, but it'll be something similar to that. When we click this option, as long as we're logged into Windows with a Sage 200 administration account, then if any new Windows user accounts have been added into our Active Directory, we will get a screen up showing at least one account with a status of new. In this case, our new account that we've created is called Fred, uh, and that shows up there as we can see with a status of new. When I click OK, then I receive a message about the new account. So I click OK, it says basically that one user account will be created. Okay. If I say no, I don't want to create that, it will then proceed into the normal login to the system admin, uh, but then the next time I log in, it will pop me up with that same message again until such point that I say yes here. So I'm just going to say yes now because I do want to add in our new account, Fred, uh, in with some permissions for Sage 200. So I say yes there. So that then comes up on screen saying that it's updating the users. So that's then going to update him and add him into the list. So it says user updated successfully then, so I click OK. It then progresses with standard um, Sage 200 system admin functionality of checking core components, etc, etc. And will eventually pop me up with a list of the options for within the system administration piece of the software. I'll just wait for that to that. So there we go. So we can see now that it says that we've got five existing accounts now. Yep. What I now need to do is just click on the users list. So I click on users. Uh, and then I've got my list there. What we can see is, again, so a new user, Fred, that we've created, we've got no roles assigned. All the others are already a, a member of uh, the group that we're going to use, which is the admin group. Okay. So in order to assign Fred into the group, what I do is I just double-click Fred there. That then opens his user account up. Um, then move on to the member of tab. So I click on there. I've then got available roles. So the role that I'm going to add him in is the admin role. So I'll double-click there. If I had other roles created, then there would be various other roles listed there. Things like if we had specific roles for purchasing, sales, etc., etc., then we could add those in. Uh, what, you, what they actually see when they log into Sage is they will see all of the roles that they've got permission to by default. And um, you can then filter the list down in the menu of the options that you see. And then again, that's not really covered in this uh, this sex this particular uh, training session. Okay, so I've added the roller cut in by just double clicking on there. Alternatively, I can double click it to remove it back again. Uh, and I can highlight it and click the single arrow to add, it, add in that particular one roll. So there's various ways that you can do these options in there. So I've added the that in. And you can see it's set it as the primary role for him. Okay, next thing I need to do is move on to the company access. Because whilst I've done that bit, if I then try to log in, what he would get is a message saying um, you do not have access to any companies. If Fred had tried logging in before we'd done this, he would have got a message saying you do not have access to the Sage 200 system. <coughs> so by adding the admin role in, that would remove that option, but it would still come and say you do not have access to any companies. So we meant to fix this, what we do is click on the company access tab, and then we indicate again uh, which companies uh, Fred requires access to. In this hour scenario, I'm only going to give him access to the demo data company. 
So if I double click the demo data coming, that then moves it across to the right. Okay. If Fred was okay to have access to all of the companies that I have in my system, then I can click access all companies. But for now, all we're going to do is give Fred access to that single company. So then I just simply click apply and then I click OK. So that means that Fred has now been added into the list. Um, he's now in the member of the admin role. And if he then clicked onto his um, icon on his desktop for the Sage 200 software, so I'll just close mine off here just so you can see that. So it'll just be called Sage 200 and should be on as long as the software has been installed onto his, uh, his machine that he's using or whether he's on a terminal server session as I'm using here. Um, when he then double clicks the Sage 200 icon, it should just then log him in. Um, it will log him into uh, the last company that he's used uh, on the list. So on my now, if I click OK to go onto the demo data, because I'm actually logged in as administrator and not as the Fred user account. Uh, but as he, as he only had one company, it would automatically log him into the only company that he has access to. If he has multiples, then it logs you in, then it comes up on the list and it highlights the last one that you're logged into. Okay, so I'm now logged in as. I'm actually still logged in as my administrator user because I'm not logging into Windows as Fred. But if I, if I was logged into Windows as Fred, it would have logged me in with Fred's permissions and into the demo data company. Okay, this concludes this training session. Thank you very much.